Hello friends, this video will be very, very interesting. This is the first Polynesian sample that I've done on this channel. And as you might guess from the map I'm showing on the screen right now, it's going to be the autosomal DNA results, predicted phenotype traits, and GD match results of a Polynesian, ancient Polynesian individual from Vanuatu right here. That's where this person is from. Uh, in terms of the gender, it is a female. Her mitochondrial lineage is M28B1. I'm not sure where that is, and she does not have white DNA because she's a girl. Uh, in terms of the time period, she lived in a 6th to 7th century common era, so uh, kind of like really early antiquity by European standards. I'm not sure, I don't think they practiced, uh, I don't think they even had metal working tools in this region, to be honest, in this time period. So for them, it is probably still the Stone Age, I'm not exactly sure. Uh, if you are more knowledgeable about how technology was progressing in Oceania in this time period, please let me know. But I think for them, this would be the Stone Age, the Stone Age because I don't think they had any sort of iron tools or metal tools in this location in this time period. Okay, so in terms of the GED match, I don't have GED match for you because I was banned from GED match. But I can show you her results with Admixture Studio, which is kind of better because Admixture Studio actually has an oracle for Eurogenes K36 which is a completely, completely better. So we can see with the Eurogenes K36, she's very much Oceanian. And she is a little bit Malayan as well. I'm not sure where that is located. A little bit South Chinese, a little bit South Asian, a little bit North African, uh, which is kind of surprising that she's scoring North African components and East Asian and East Central European components as well. I don't think she is a mixed person. I think this is just a fault of the calculator. Uh, some of the some of the components that are supposed to be rep representative of Oceanians are probably not very good fits, and because of that, she's scoring additional stuff outside of the region. Uh, with the Oracle, she seems to be getting more as a mixture of Melanesian plus Aboriginal Australian, which is very interesting. How do you tell the difference with Eurogenes K36 between Melanesians and Aboriginal Australians? I'm not really sure. Wouldn't they both score Oceanian for the most part? I don't know. Uh, she's also scoring Melanesian plus South Indian at now number two, um, but it's not that much. It's only 2% South Indian. So she's very clearly quite Melanesian in her ancestry. She seems to be very similar to Melanesians. I wonder if she's going to have the Melanesian blonde hair uh, variant in Tirp 1. I, I, we're going to find out, but she might. I think she might. Okay. Uh, now let's go ahead and see what she scores with my trade predictor. And actually, I'm curious about the Melanesian blonde hair variants. Let's look that up real quick. Ah, come on. Okay, it's not doing that. Let's uh, scroll back and see if if we can find that. Oh, she's not genotyped for that. That's unfortunate. So we're not going to find out if she has the Melanesian blonde hair variant in Tirp 1. Uh, because unfortunately, that data is simply not in the file. So... There's not much to talk about there. But let's look at her Nashakot results. And with Nashakot, she seems to be getting more or less closest. Uh, in terms of the phenotypes closest to her, the closest phenotype is this, which is kind of this Aboriginal Australian phenotype that I included into my um, into my like collection of phenotypes that show up for the result. Uh, number two is this phenotype, which looks kind of Vietnamese or something. And number three is this phenotype, which is South Indian. And for the two-way mode oracle, I actually added a phenotype oracle re really recently that tries to approximate what your phenotype might be like by adding two different phenotypes together. So the closest model for her is a mixture of 50% this plus 50% this. Uh, the second closest is a mixture of 50% this plus 50% this. The third closest is this. The fourth closest is this. And the fifth closest is, interestingly, this. Okay, so there seems to be an Australoid component in all of the five uh, mixtures that show up. So it seems that uh, she definitely has an Australoid uh, component to her appearance. When it comes to her eye color prediction, her eye color prediction is very dark brown, definitely darkest brown eyes, although she has 25% likelihood of brown eyes as well. Uh, but overall, definitely very dark eye color, much darker than most people in... Uh, the in uh, Western Eurasia. For hair color, it looks like she's got black hair once again. So black hair, darkest brown eyes. Uh, for skin color, it looks like she's got light brown skin. Very interesting. So 
Uh, it seems that various Eurasians, uh, Eurasians don't really score dark brown skin with my trade predictor. That's just how it is. Eurasians typically score um, anything from palest to light brown, but you will not commonly find Eurasians with dark brown skin tone predictions. <laughs> Even though in reality, her skin tone might have been dark brown. It's very possible. Uh, for hair texture, it looks like she's got straight or wavy hair. Uh, curly hair is also sort of possible, and kinky hair is sort of out of the picture. I think there are Melanesians. Uh, I think there are people, I should rephrase, I think there are Polynesians with straight hair and wavy and curly hair. Uh, I don't think all of them have kinky hair, although I would say kinky hair is probably the most typical hair texture for these people. And for coloring related variants, looks like she does not have BH3, no BH2, not even BH1. Okay, definitely very dark. Um, she's not genotyped for this variation in SLC24A4, A4, A5, excuse me. Big screw up. I should have said A5. But she doesn't have a genotype here because this is simply not in her file. Uh, I would assume she doesn't have any light color variants here though, because she's not a Western Eurasian. But, um,. She does have two light color variants in this variation of SLC45A2, which contributes to lighter pigmentation of eyes, hair, and skin. That contributed to the score. And zero light color variants in this variation of SLC45A2, which contributes to darker pigmentation of eyes, hair, and skin. Uh, she actually does not have any light color variants in this variation of ICP, which is very interesting as well, because most Eurasians tend to have uh, two or one light color variants in this variation. Uh, and had this kind of a genotype, zero light color variance in, in this variation of ICP leads to a darker pigmentation of skin. Uh, it also sort of influences the eye and hair uh, and uh, hair color estimate. Okay, so for Kittel G, it looks like she's, she's got two light color variants in this variation of Kittel G, so lighter color of skin. Um, okay, for Tsirp1, the variance that she's genotyped for, she does not have any light color variance there. Okay. And for MC1R, this is something that's kind of crazy. She actually has one light color variant in this variation of MC1R. So that definitely contributes to a increased uh, score for red hair and an increased score for light skin. So let's see what she scored. Did she score anything for red hair? She did indeed score a little bit for red hair. Look at that. So she's got... Her score for red hair is actually higher than her score for light and dark blonde hair. And that's because... That's partially because of her genotype hair in MC1R, where she's got one one light color variant in MC1R. Very, very surprising. Uh, I wasn't expecting to see that. So there is a little bit of a predisposition to being ginger, even, in this sample. But most likely she looked like this first phenotype that shows up. Most likely this was kind of what she looked like. On the right, of course, because she's a girl. All right, now let's see her polygenic risk scores and monogenic traits. For the polygenic risk scores, it looks like she's got a slightly above average score for schizophrenia, a pretty high score for type 2 diabetes. Wow, that's interesting. So she's got a high score for type 2 diabetes. She's got a below average score for Alzheimer's, and she's got a, looks like a slightly above average score for multiple sclerosis. Okay, so we have to uh, watch out for the diabetes and, and explore that panel a little bit more in depth than I usually do. And normally I just kind of skip over it. For cancer section, looks like she's got four risk patterns for breast cancer out of 10, which is pretty... Uh, pretty bad actually. So we're gonna have to we're gonna have to look at that. Uh, Ten risk variants for testicular cancer out of twenty, which is pretty good, pretty typical. Zero for celiac disease out of ten, which is pretty typical. Zero for GSS out of zero, only zero were found. So yep, pretty typical. Uh, I guess um, it's kind of a low quality file. <laughs> Two for Crohn's out of twelve, pretty typical, uh, good. Zero for Reifenstein's out of four, pretty good. And two for Parkinson's out of eight, unfortunate, but. I can't really fact check that, and also not a very high quality file. All right, so we we only have to really w w uh, watch out for type two diabetes, and we have to watch out for this. Uh, I don't even know, maybe breast cancer. Yeah, so breast cancer and type two diabetes is what we're gonna focus on when we look at the monogenic traits. Okay, so we're gonna start with the results for mental health section. Uh, monogenic traits. She's got a gene comes valmet variation, and she's got GG in uh, the relevant variation in MAOA that has to do with warrior versus warrior. So she's definitely a lot more worry or than warrior because she heterozygous in comet, but warrior in MAOA. Uh, both of these enzymes do the same thing. They break down dopamine in your brain. And if you have more of the MAOA enzyme and an average number of comet enzyme, you probably have a little bit quicker dopamine breakdown because of the increased number of MAOA enzyme. And because of that, you got 
less dopamine in the system, therefore advantages in stressful situations, but disadvantages in attention tasks and tasks that require attention and motivation, basically. She does not have any no goal learning evidence to reduce profidence in pro variation, so higher number of dopamine due to receptor sites in the brain, higher likelihood of schizophrenia. Very typical genotype for anybody outside of Europe. But what is atypical about her genotype, actually, is that she's got AA in TAC1. That's really, really atypical, and uh, I don't see this very often. So she's got a greatly reduced, uh, greatly reduced number of dopamine due to receptor sites in the brain and increased, increased likelihood of stuff like alcoholism, Parkinson's, ADHD, and various other illnesses. This is extremely atypical for humans. Uh, maybe maybe 4 or 3% of people have this genotype right here. Uh, it might be higher or lower for some ethnicities. I'm not really sure the ethnic distributions of the A1 allele in TAC1, but it is atypical for every human group. Uh, and what's interesting about the A1 allele in TAC1 is pretty much every Neanderthal or monkey or any kind of non-human has AA genotype here, which is implicated in greatly reduced number of dopamine D2 receptor sites in the brain. I will remind you once again. Uh, so this kind of a genotype is very interesting because it increases the odds for a, a variety of illnesses such as alcoholism, Parkinson's, ADHD, but it also sort of decreases the odds for uh, one illness that's kind of really uncommon, but it's schizophrenia, and it, it greatly reduces the odds for that. Overall, I would say it's more of a bad genotype because schizophrenia is really, really uncommon. You don't really see people with that every day. Uh, but alcoholism, Parkinson's, ADHD, that's something that almost every, every family has a, uh, a, a, a member with one of those traits. Okay, it looks like she does not have long-form 5-HTC LPR, so she's got, she's got short-form 5-HTC LPR. Therefore, slightly higher odds of depression. Uh, autism, nothing was found. DDC, nothing was found. Lactose persistence, she does not carry any alleles for European lactose persistence. She, if she took an ancestry test, I would say, hey, you're lactose intolerant. Or OXTR, the empathy gene, it looks like she's got two sociopath variants for reduced OXTR expression here. However, she's got this genotype, which leads to increased OXTR expression and higher levels of empathy. So it's, I guess it's kind of mixed. Uh, she's not entirely a sociopath. Um, also, not, not entirely an empath, just kind of in between, like most people. Uh, for diabetes, this is all of the relevant variations that were found in the file for diabetes, kind of a, a, a small list. It looks like she does not have type 1 diabetes, which is really good to see, but she's got this gene type, which increases the odds of type 2 diabetes. She's got... Oh, that's actually the only relevant gene type for type, type 2 diabetes that was found. Although there are some that aren't printed on the screen that show, that show up in, um, in the calculation. So I guess we're not going to find out what it is that caused her to have a high score for diabetes. For hemochromatosis, nothing relevant was found in the file. For Alzheimer's, it looks like she's got no risk variance for Alzheimer's in APOE. Uh, all right, really good to see. For multiple sclerosis, it looks like she's got two risk variants in this variation of HLA, which is really interesting, which causes a much higher odds of multiple sclerosis. But she does not have any risk variance in the other variants. Uh, does not have any risk variance in the other variations, excuse me. So it looks like uh, her increased odds of multiple sclerosis might not be that big of a deal. Also, it's a very rare illness. So most likely she doesn't have it. <laughs> most people don't have it. Even people who have a crazy high score for it most likely don't have the illness because it's just so rare. For cardiovascular disease panel, it looks like she... Eh, I don't really care about this. For myopia, um, no G allele here, which the G allele, if you remember... Uh, you, you probably have to watch my videos from like months back because I started talking about this a long time and I've been skipping this section in my videos for, I don't know how long, it's been a long time since I talked about it. But the G allele here, uh, very interesting. It's a very European allele to have and it protects from myopia. In her case, she's not a European and she does not have the G allele, so she does not have this protection from myopia. Um, probably, actually, yeah, she's got all these genotypes that, that increase the risk of myopia. So. In her case, she probably doesn't have the best eyesight. But I don't know. Maybe maybe there is some wiggle room there. For miscellaneous sections, slightly higher IQ, better performing muscle, muscles, likely sprinter rather than endurance athlete, and not East Asian genotype in EDAR. So she's got a uh, genotype in EDAR that is not East Asian, does not have East Asian EDAR. Um, for drug response, we're going to skip. For albinism, nothing interesting here. For familiar Mediterranean fever, no risk variance for that. 
For MTHFR panel, it looks like she's got TT in this variation of MTHFR, which is most common and leads to a variety, uh, lower odds for a variety of health issues. Really good to see. For cancer span, also, we remember she had a pretty high score for cancer, breast cancer. And it looks like indeed she does. She's got two risk variants in this variation of B BRCA1 and two risk variants in this variation. It is probably not that big of a deal, but um, actually, let's look up these variations. Are they are are the risk variants they're common or are they not very common? Uh, I can't even find any info on them just by looking up. Okay, that's unfortunate. That's unfortunate. I can look up the. Um, I don't want to do it. I don't want to open my code in front of you guys. But okay, let's do it. Let's do it. Uh, let's do it. Um, Let's let's see. Is it common? Is it? Let's find out. Investigative research. It's been a long time since I was working on this. I don't remember. Oh come on. Okay, it's done. All right. So yeah, it looks pretty common. Okay, it looks pretty common. So I guess having two risk variants here is uh, not that big of a deal. For leukemia panel, it looks like she's got lower odds of leukemia, which is really good to see. For rare diseases and traits panel, it looks like uh, she's got this genotype, which leads to a high risk for certain autoimmune diseases, including Addison's and type 1 diabetes. Okay. For celiac disease panel, it looks like no risk finance for that. Really good to see. For allergies, we're going to skip. Androgen receptor gene panel, it looks like she's got a gene in this variation of, of AR gene which leads to a decreased risk of baldness, and A is the protective allele, which is really good to see right here. Um, by the way, only a girl can have heterozygous genotype in this variation because it is located on the X chromosome. So if you're a boy, uh, if, you, if you are a boy, you can only be homozygous for it. Well, I guess you, can, you only have one allele, really, but in your raw data file, there's gonna be, it's going to be a homozygous call. That's what it's going to look like. Um, if you're a boy, but she's a girl, so she can have a heterozygous gene type here, which is kind of interesting. For Crohn's disease section, it looks like uh, nothing relevant was found here. For Canavan syndrome, zero risk variance for that. Really good to see. For HIV and AIDS panel, it looks like only one thing was found, and it doesn't. It means it's that she doesn't have any risk variance in this variation, which is really good to see. For muscular dystrophy myopathies, it looks like she does not have any risk variance for ADL, but she does have two risk alleles here, which is kind of crazy. Okay, let's let's look this up. Let's look this up. What is this? So she probably has GG here. No, no, no. She probably has AA here because that's the least common allele. Yeah, so okay. I guess it's not that uncommon. It's not that... It's it's not that rare. And it's, in fact, among the um, Kenyans, Luhia, Kenya, it's pretty, pretty common. And African Southwest America, pretty common as well. Yoruba. Pretty common as well. Yeah, okay, so it's um, not that big of a deal, to be honest. All right, and for color blindness panel, it looks like she does not have any risk variants for that. Unfortunately, nothing relevant was found at all in the OPN1 LW and OPN1 MW genes. And for uh, FTO gene panel, it looks like she's got homozygous genotype for uh, the fat gene, so intermediate odds of obesity. Um, Okay, and for bio traits panel, it looks like she's got lower odds of male pattern boldness and lower predisposition to anger, which is really good to see. But male pattern boldness may not be very relevant for her because she's a, a female. Well, that's pretty much all there is to this individual. I sort of discussed everything there is to discuss. Thanks for watching my video until the end. Leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed it. Uh, and of course, you know, you can download this file in 2050 format from link, which is in the description of the video. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.